What is up guys, this is T2 back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video, I'm gonna be showing you the Avix Rogue Edition MIUI 13 based on Android 12 and this is the Rogue Edition 22.5.9 and this is the China beta build I would say. So yes, you don't get the Play Store and stuff by default but you can definitely install them easily and the build date here is 15th May 2022 build and MIUI version is of course 13 you can see from right here and you can just download it from right here if you are having problems i'll place the mirror links i had really huge problems while downloading this rom but yeah otherwise this rom has been really really amazing for me at least and i'll mention everything that i have faced or i have experienced with this particular rom but firstly let me show you the home screen this is how it looks like looks beautiful and we get these widgets and stuff i'll show you all those later on but let me show you the about section first in the quick setting panel this is how it looks like this is how you go into the settings of course and over here we have to go into this avix rogue info and this is how the about phone section looks like now we in here we have the storage mentioned and this also has this kind of animation as you can see if you move the device and if you scroll down more we get the update channel and stuff then we have the maintainer's name as omi and you can see the all specs from right here and of course all the specs are showing up just right and the android version is android 12 if you keep tapping on it you get this android 12 clock and over here if you make it 12 o'clock of course this is based on android 12. let me go back and if you don't know how to actually flash this rom on your redmi k20 pro you can check out the flashing guide of any custom rom from the card or the description i have flashed this rom with the same method and it worked perfectly fine yes i have the orange box recovery and stuff everything still working but my storage is of course decrypted and here we have the rogue edition version and the security patch you can see from right there it's first may 2022 i guess and we have the other information let me go back and in here if you go we can see this is based on MIUI 13 of course and you can check for updates from right here and this is based on the nightly build of redmi k30 pro i guess i mean this is a port from redmi k30 pro's china MIUI 13 build now just notice the animations over here if i go home this is how you go home and the animations is just beautiful now let's talk about the home screen yes this home screen looks pretty similar than how it was but we get these widgets that's the different thing and let me actually show you the home screen settings from right here and this is how you can adjust the transition effects or customize them and you can set a default screen and stuff you can change the home screen layout up to five by six and in the more settings this is how it looks like and we have the animation rate the balance and the minimalist and the elegance option and we have the system navigations of course you can use the buttons if you want to but i have been using with the full screen gestures they are working perfectly fine and we have all these customizations pretty similar to how it was we have the show memory status and this is how the recent panel looks like by the way you can see the ram status right there and we have this kind of like quick setting panel and of course you can actually change it to horizontal quick setting panel if you want to the floating windows options are there but for some reason in the normal youtube app the floating window is not working let me tell you that now here inside widgets we can of course find the newer widgets it takes a moment and we have all these widgets the calendar dates and stuff the calendar widget is not that helpful and on this particular area where you see this security weather gallery and stuff if you click all then you will see the normal MIUI widgets and from here if you click on the android widgets there you will find the normal like app widgets that you used to get in MIUI. Of course, I had to add this lock button because this does not have the double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen. But yes, these new widgets I definitely am liking and this is how the calendar widget looks like. Not very useful for me because calendar widget doesn't look that much good. Here we have this kind of battery widget. This is what I like and you can just click on it to enable the ultra battery saver or something like that or normal battery saver. But this battery widget is really unique. I haven't seen this like something like this before. But let me show you so if i just open this bluetooth headsets case right here just notice how it will connect so yeah that's the animation i'm talking about it looks amazing so if i just close it and we are back to the normal battery icon that is the animation you get and here you can see the like bluetooth headsets battery status and your phone's battery status so yes this widget is really unique that i have seen over here now to the left we get this app vault and of course you can also add widgets over here there we get the calendar widget then we have the apps and stuff and i have also added the calculator widget over here so you can just calculate something really quickly 
So yeah, this is really cool that we have all these widgets and it stays right there. And of course, if you tap on these widgets, it opens the clock widget and stuff. And if you tap on the calendar widget, it will open the calendar app. And this is how the calendar app looks and all the animations just looks beautiful. By the way, another good thing is you get the MIUI dialer and the MIUI messaging app over here. That is really unique and we have the call recording and stuff. Everything should be working perfectly fine over here. By the way, I do not have a SIM card over here, but yes, wall decalling and stuff should be working great. And yes, it's a much more improved MIUI dialer, I would say. So yeah, everywhere you are getting this new kind of UI and just notice the animations. They look beautiful, I would say. And here, the settings kind of animation, I am really liking. Just notice the animation on the settings icon. Once you are going back or something like that. Yeah, that's how it works. And in the weather app too, and let me show you the calculator app. This is different from the normal calculator app that you find in Play Store. Let me show you, you can actually switch to the converter. This is how the converter looks over here and it looks beautiful. And in the currency converter, this is how it looks like. Let me go back and show you some new general systems and stuff. And the mass calculator, this is how everything looks. And just notice the animations everywhere. It looks beautiful. And of course, you can have this kind of feature where the calculator app stays like this in a pop-up kind of window or picture-in-picture -picture mode and you can actually adjust the size with whatever you are doing on your screen you can have it right there now let me talk about the app drawer and stuff yes app drawer is still there and it is working normally as it does in MIUI now here this is how the quick setting panel looks like of course you know which OS it looks similar to and of course this brightness slider and stuff definitely looks like iOS and they work perfectly fine and we have the media control volume right there we have the bluetooth toggles and stuff then the other auto brightness airplane mode lock screen location sound toggle etc and of course this is how the wi-fi expansion works and they are really looking beautiful and by the way if you just switch to the dark theme just notice how it will look and it takes a moment but yes this is how it looks like in the dark theme of course the quick setting panel and stuff and even the home screen widgets everything just turns dark and even the wallpaper you might have noticed turned dark so yeah this is the default wallpaper over here and with that the quick setting panel just looks amazing and by the way this is how the notification panel looks like and yes you can edit and add different toggles over here just like this but these are the toggles that are present we have the lock orientation the scanner the reading mode and the do not disturb the battery saver ultra battery saver the screen recorder is there me shared then the floating window hotspot and nfc option is there because this rom is ported from that china rom kind of thing so china devices has the nfc but of course the k20 pro in india does not have nfc so it doesn't work also in the status bar it shows that bluetooth battery icon if you're noticing for the time being i'll just disable the dark theme and show you the other things by the way let me show you the always on display this is how it looks like and of course it looks beautiful i have changed that to this one and of course there are plethora of options for the always on display now let me show you the fingerprint scanner speed and i just tap the fingerprint scanner and it unlocks just notice the unlocking speed and how fluidly the animation works over here it looks beautiful everywhere i can use the other fingers too if i want and here from the always on display if i double tap just like this this is how the lock screen looks like of course you can change the lock screen clock if you want to and here if i tap the fingerprint scanner this is how it unlocks the animations overall all over the UI is just awesome. Now in terms of the special features we still have the gaming turbo then we have the video toolbox the tap plus and floating window effects and front camera effects the second space and the kid space and MIUI lab etc options the light mode everything is there you shouldn't worry about those. Of course inside fingerprint we have the screen lock then the fingerprint unlock and stuff and face unlock you can set up if you want. Now here the keyboard whenever you are entering a password or something by default it switches to the me secure keyboard and yeah that's how it works even if you are using gboard while entering a password or something it will switch to the me secure keyboard so right now i think it's working so it takes a moment but yes the face unlock does work and it did complete the setup so let me just try the face unlock i just double tap over here on the lock screen so i think i have to swipe up for this so yes i swipe up and it perfectly unlocks so no issues whatsoever with the face unlock it is working perfectly fine if you're noticing Blazing fast face unlocking speed too, but of course the device has a motorized camera so it's slightly slower than other devices. But yeah, even the fingerprint scanner is working perfectly fine. And if you want to see the app lock, this is how the app lock UI looks. And just notice the animation in the background. It looks beautiful all over the UI. And if I just tap the fingerprint scanner, as you can see, it unlocks. 
So yes, the app lock and stuff, everything is working perfectly great, no issues whatsoever. Now of course in the notification control center, we can of course change the notification center or the control center to the newer version or the older version if you want that. And we have the additional cards option and we have the status bar and stuff. And from here you can enable the network speed and stuff, normal MIUI stuff and the battery icon you can change from right here. And inside wallpapers and stuff, we have this kind of all the things you can see from right here, the lock screen, the home screen wallpaper, the lock screen clock, the icons and the always on display. And from here, you can actually change the always on display. Let me actually show you. And here, these are the newer kind of clocks that you may find over here. And we have the other things. So yeah, a lot of clocks that you can see for the always on display that you get. But most of the text and stuff are still in Chinese because again, this is a China ROM. In the display settings, we have the light mode and the dark mode and you can schedule the dark mode from here. Then we have the anti flicker or the DC dimming mode, I guess. And we have the color scheme. You can change it to vivid, saturated or standard. Let me go back. We have the other things like the control center and status bar from right here too. So yeah, this is how the display settings looks. Now let me show you the sound settings. And here in the sound settings, we have the sound assistant. So you can customize all these things. And we have the do not disturb, notify about calls and stuff. Then we have the profile video for incoming call. So profile video is not supported in India, in like Indian MIUI, I guess. And here in the additional settings, we have all these settings. And let me show you in the sound effects, we get the Harman Kardon certified pro audio. And the sound quality on this particular ROM via the headphone jack and Bluetooth was amazing. Even with speakers, sound quality is just different on MIUI. And here in this MIUI 13, it's just even better than the official like Indian MIUI, I would say. And we have the hi-fi audio option. And if you connect a wired headset, of course, you get the presets for the like youth edition and stuff headphones. And we have the headphone remote button control and we have the assign buttons. So yeah, all these functions will work once you connect or plug in a wired headset. And here in the app settings, we have the system apps, manage apps and the dual apps. And the app lock is there inside this app settings. Inside more, we have all these gesture shortcut and stuff. And we have all the take a screenshot and stuff. Let me show you the screenshot options. And here you can take a screenshot by just swiping three fingers. Of course, this works perfectly fine. Also, you can just press and hold these three fingers just like this to take a partial screenshot. And that works perfectly fine over here too. So you can just take a screenshot just like this. Really unique feature of MIUI, but yes, all these functions are working. And inside edit, this is how you can edit it. And we have all this pen option and stuff and you can mark some stuff just like this. So yeah, all these functions are there and you can customize or like edit it however you want to. But let me tell you, if you want to actually like enable Play Store and stuff, yes, let me show you the Play Store is working great. But to actually get the Play Store, you have to go into the Me apps or the Gate apps over here. This is the Gate apps. And over here, you just search Google Play. Let me show you. So once you search Google Play, you will find this Google Play app and over here you can just install it. And this is the Google Play Store that it will install. So yes, after installing it, it works perfectly fine. Here, let's talk about the stock camera. Well, you of course get the MIUI camera over here, but the functionality is very less in my frank opinion, because as you can see, you really don't get any kind of lens switching option over here. So yes, the developer has mentioned the camera functionality is a lot less over here. And that's how it is. The photo mode works perfectly fine. And if you switch the front camera, just notice it is working perfectly fine. Even the portrait mode and stuff should be working great. And let me show you the whole camera UI. I feel it's a much more optimized experience. And of course you get all the beautify modes and stuff and the filters are working perfectly great. Here in the video settings, you get up to 10 to be 60 FPS option for some reason for the rear camera. It doesn't show that stock 4K 30 or 4K 60 FPS option of the Redmi K20 Pro. And that's how it is. And in the pro mode, you only get the photo shooting option, like you can shoot pro photos, but definitely this one does not support the pro video mode. And for the front camera, you get up to 1080p 30fps, which is pretty normal. And if you're willing to look at the settings, let me show you. This is how the settings works. We have the H.264 and 265 both. So HVC is supported and we have the customization option. And let me show you the other things. If you swipe up, you get the short video, the panorama and time lapse and edit. That's it. There is no document mode or something like that. So yeah, this is how the MIUI camera is and it's a lot less in functionality. And of course, taking a picture is working perfectly fine. The shutter speed is fine, I would say. So yeah, no issues whatsoever with the shutter speed of this MIUI camera. And if you want to take a look at the details and stuff, yes, the pictures are coming out to be very detailed. And yeah, you can just notice. 
it looks beautiful. Now talking about the basic things, yes, the volume panel looks like this and of course you can see that frosted glass kind of effect on the volume panel and if you tap here you get the full volume panel which looks like this you can enable the do not disturb from right here you can put the phone into like the muted notifications from right here and of course you can control the media volume and stuff and this is how it looks like and of course it definitely looks closer to ios talking about the power menu this is how it looks like you can put the phone into reboot option just like this or you can just power it off just like this so yeah the power menu is different and it looks like this one now here the safety net actually fails, I am not really sure why, right out of the box. But yes, it only fails the CTS profile match, so banking apps may work, I am not really sure about that. But if you don't flash magic, I don't think that all the banking apps will work. But yes, the safety net is not working right out of the box if you check the safety net test. And the DRM info shows as L1 over here, so you, of course you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p without any problems I think. And talking about the whole UI's performance, yes, everything is like buttery smooth over here and all the like apps and stuff should stay in memory. And as you can see, I can just switch to any other app and all the apps should stay in the memory. And yes, I think I went back from the recorder app, but yeah, we have all these functions and stuff. All the apps mostly should stay in memory. Talking about the benchmarks here are the Android and Geekbench score with the CPU stress test on this particular build. There are some functions or some things that are still not fixed in this MIUI. Like in the YouTube Creator Studio app, if I just open my video and one of my videos, if I try to share that and here, just notice there is no copy to clipboard option. This was a problem of MIUI in like previous MIUI versions and still this function has not been fixed. Yes, I can copy to a particular app, then just copy the link from there. But definitely that's not how it's supposed to be. There should be a copy to clipboard option, but I can't really do that over here because the option is simply not present on this particular share option. No copy to clipboard you get. And this is what annoys me about MIUI. And in this latest MIUI 13 of China ROM, this is still a problem. This is how the battery saver settings looks like. We have this turn off and charge option, automatically turn off I mean. So yeah, all these battery saver options are there. And the battery saver supposedly will work fine and this is how the battery settings looks like and we have this active time and it looks beautiful in the like MIUI's battery settings and of course let me scroll down more you can see which apps used the most battery I don't know why NFC used 11.5% of my battery this device simply does not have NFC what is this MIUI so yeah <laughs> I would say the battery life is not the best thing about this ROM that I can say with this Echo battery app, I have tested it and let me show you. I have got about 4 hours and 52 minutes or 5 hours of screen on time, which I would say is not that great because in custom ROMs, I can definitely get about 6 to 7 hours of screen on time. Maybe the battery life will be improving in the future because still this is a beta staged ROM or of course this is a portrait ROM too. The screen off or the standby time is good and in the health section, you can see my battery health shows at 66%. Of course, my battery is really old. But yes, the battery life is not the best thing that you will get in this particular MIUI that I can see. Now, let me show you how it looks while charging. The charging animation is just one of the best things straight up that I can say for this MIUI. But overall the smoothness and overall the optimizations of this ROM is just amazing and everywhere the animations and stuff the whole UI stays very very smooth and all the things just looks it has been like optimized really really well I would say the MIUI is much much more optimized than how it was previously that I can definitely say. So give this video a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye bye now.